the pattern is the price per gigabyte, which is based on footage count, is how the post house gets you. When you send a bid and the post house gives you a bid, you're like, oh, we're going to shoot 10 hours. Like, okay, here's how much 10 hours is going to come cost. Oh, we shot 17 hours. <laughs> they go, well, we just multiply it by 17 instead of 10, you know? The more you shoot, the higher shooting ratio goes up, the more you save. Because you're not paying by the hour when you do these things on set, because you're paying for the labor and the hardware and the computers automating all the process. So with the shows that I do that have more footage save more money. That means if you're doing a commercial for one day, the savings is almost eliminated. It's about the same price, because you're only shooting two or three hours of footage, and you got this huge cart. Everybody's happy because they can see it and they can use it, and it's done, but they didn't really save any money. Depending on the commercial, that's not a big deal. But if you shoot for 30, 40, 50 days, as the footage count goes up, the, the amortization of the savings goes up. So it's better the bigger and the longer the show. And on a TV show where they shoot for four or five months, and they shoot for five or six day weeks, and they shoot for 12 hours a day, and they shoot up to four hours a day, the savings is astronomical. It's up to 40% because they don't have to do any processing ever. So it's a huge, it's a huge difference. Time compression. This is a, sh I call it a shot clock. This is a shot clock based on when you get two 16 gig CF cards that are full, what it takes to do. If you have the right system, and Max Digital has one of my carts here, the outpost cart down the hall, so you can, you can inspect it. Um, and you can build your own if you want. Um, shooting 16 gig cards. I can back up two 16 gig cards in five minutes in parallel on the system. So there's no bottlenecking with that, okay? So I can put it on LTO in about eight minutes, okay? So we've added, we got about 14 minutes worth of time so far. Then, can you guys kind of see this? Okay, then the down there is transferring the firewire to editorial, four minutes to transfer the footage, um, and making H.264, four minutes. It happens at the same time because I can transfer and make H.264 parallel, okay? Then I can upload it to an iPod, if I have a Wi-Fi connection, I could upload it to a PIC server, put it on the cloud, because those files are only three megabits a second, so they're pretty small. So that's going to take about four minutes. And then the whole time, I can put it on LTO to reload it. So I can reload an LTO and check the LTO. So that's going to take about seven more minutes. So I can back up and download and make 264s and everything in about 18 minutes, two 16 gig cards, which is going to have about nine minutes of footage on it. So when you have this system and you're totally focused, you can actually do all these deliverables effectively in real time. 18 minutes of footage can be finished about 18 minutes later. And this is, do, this is happening now. Like there are people capable, you have to, it's sort of like a race car driver. You know, a race car driver can drive a car a lot better than I can. And running a system like this, you've got to really be on it. And it takes training, you know, it takes a little bit of training. But once you get focused on this and you see how the system's optimized, or you build your own, you can totally compress time, which is so valuable to people on set. Creative control. You now can give the DP, and these are some of the best advocates I have as I go, you want control. You don't want this stuff all over the place. You don't want to have to chase files. You don't have to take stills and send it to the post office and hope it comes back looking right. You want to control it. This is not a DIT tent. You'll see every picture I have of like my outpost car. I don't have DIT tents. I, I, I don't think that that is what this is about, especially with the red. Because the red, people say, don't we need LUTs? We need to have a LUT for all this. No, you don't. And that's not my opinion. I believe it's actually a fact. You don't need LUTs with this system. The reason why is this camera photographs and delivers what colors existed in nature. In other words, if it happened here, and their white balance correctly, and their tint is correct, and their ISO and their exposure are correct. What they see with their eyes is what the camera delivers you. When you shoot film, that's not how film works. If you ever held a negative to light, you're like, this needs some processing, needs some help, right? If you shoot F35 in S-log mode, you look at the picture like, this needs some help, I can't deliver this. If you shoot Air Airflex Log C, I can't show this to anybody, I need some help. So you're gonna need these sidecar normalization or LUT systems to fix the picture so it does emulate what happened in nature. The red does that for you. So you don't need to build LUTs. 19 out of 20 projects can shoot an entire movie on one LUT, red color, red gamma. That will deliver what was photographed in nature so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. 
I'm working with Don Burgess now. He shot a movie called Book of Eli about two years ago, and in Book of Eli, they had a very stylized look. This is the exception, because if they're delivering a stylized look, they don't want to deliver what was photographed in nature because it doesn't look the way the film ultimately is supposed to look. So they paint in camera, and then that just gets delivered as the LUT, okay? So that's an exception, and you might make some exceptions to that, but generally, 19 out of 20 projects, Sky is blue, grass is green, skin is skin, red is red, right? That's, that's most of what's happening. And then they use color correction to dial in later, but as far as delivering dailies to editorial and pics and viewing systems, stuff like that, this camera is a lot delivery box. Um, you can adjust your framing. If you have underslung, you can flop the camera, you can flip the camera if you're doing 3D. Um, whoops, I went too far. Um, Metadata, you can use the metadata through the DI, which is really important because you can make these sidecar files called RMD files, red metadata files, and if you're using the right system, you can read an RMD later, and that's really, really important. And then, I always said, multiple LUTs not needed. I just finished a film that came out, maybe you saw it, called Social Network, and one of the, my favorite quotes from David was, when working with red, one daily's LUT can be applied to the whole film. Social Network was shot with one setting, 500 ASA, Tungsten, 3200, uh, they, they set the camera 3200, lit to 3200, and there's only three scenes in the entire movie that are not shot under those conditions. That's it. Everything else is 500T, um, 500 tungsten, uh, 500 ISO, and it is uh, 3200 degrees. And that is what, what really 98% of this film is shot on. And he's like, I don't need all these LUTs. I don't need to do all this stuff because I, I shoot what, I'm, what I want to be lighting. I'm lighting it how I want to see it, and then I just photograph that. It's so logical, you know? And the camera just says, this is what was there. This is what it looked like. And you're like, good. That's a great starting point. So that's a really important thing. Okay. So now, outpost hourlies and live play. So this is where stuff gets really, really exciting. So all the things that I just demonstrated about how this process is, are you guys starting to see how the idea behind Outpost works, right? So how do we even improve it to the next level? How do we take it to a level that, we, that, that no one else can touch? And that's one of the things that file-based systems deliver. When I said at the beginning, people say, why are you such a red fan? Why is it this? And I said, it's because it's a perfectly balanced camera. It does everything the best. The number one component that makes the camera malleable is the fact that it's a data-centric raw image capture system, compressed raw. I also believe by 2015 this whole uncompressed fad that's going around will be so dead because compression is not bad. In 1999 through 2004 when compression was like DV25 or DVC Pro 50 or even DVC Pro, compression had problems because the compression was only as good as computers could decode it, right? So, quick lesson, a codec is a compression box and the, a compression container, and codec really means compression and decompression. It's to encode and decode. And you can only encode and decode as fast as a computer can calculate. Slower computer means worse compression because the math or the arithmetic required to encode and decode is weaker, right? What is happening with a red rocket card is it's a calculator that does one algorithm. So when you take up a PCI board this big and sell it for $5,000 and it does one calculation, it can do it really, really well, right? But your computer is built to do millions, trillions of calculations, so it does them all okay, right? That's the, the, nothing's optimized. Well, red has essentially a red rocket in it. It's always had a red rocket in it, and it's an encoder. And then the rocket that you buy for your computer is a decoder. Well, what's happening is compression is getting more complicated because the computers can keep up, which means the files can get smaller, but they can look better. 